For me, Singapore equals food. No other place in the world can give you so many options of delicious bites in such a compact city. It makes the task of finding out where to eat quite complicated, which is why I think I need a guide. I've always said that the best way to visit a city is to run it, but the best way to eat through it is to ask someone who lives here. And if they work in the food and drink industry, much better. In today's video, Patrick Liana, the Filipino-Canadian head chef at the multi-awarded Burnt Ends, will be taking me around some of his favorite food spots in Singapore. This should be good. Burnt Ends is located in the upscale Dempsey Hill District, which is home to a bunch of stores and Michelin-starred restaurants. It's been awarded by practically every award-giving body there is. They cook an unapologetic modern-style Australian barbecue that focuses on fire. Burnt Ends is probably one of my favorite restaurants in Singapore. I've been coming here, well, when I can, when I'm here. It's always delicious. I love what they're doing with the food and the dining scene, and anything cooked in fire is one of my favorite things to eat. The space is gorgeous, a huge dining room, a private room, a newly opened cocktail bar. But its grandeur doesn't overshadow their straight-on approach to food and a certain rock aesthetic. I'm going to meet Patrick, the head chef. He's going to tell me a little bit about what they do here, and then hopefully we're going to have some good bites to eat. Burnt Ends is a, a live-fire restaurant, so everything we do here is done on wood, centered around a four-ton wood-burning oven. And we basically burn the wood, and we use that for the embers to cook with. So you have a lot of clean smoke, a lot of smoky flavors, smoky taste. These are pretty much the signatures of the restaurant, obviously from, apart from the bigger things, but these are the must-haves when you come in. So. And first up, you have the uh, smoked quail leg and caviar. This one is best eaten just all in one go, and you'll understand what we're all about. Copious amounts of uh, wood added to it. You so, really taste mostly the quail egg. That smoke comes through, and then that caviar just gives you a little bit of salt, the saltiness, a little bit of luxury as well, yeah. comfort. So really nice. So basically, the menu is based around wood fire or smoke. Uh, a lot of our products come from Australia, and a lot of products come from overseas. Next one, Grissini Tamaslada is a total fan favorite. It's a uh, spurnt flour flatbread Grissini. We bake in the oven here. Tamaslada is a smoked pollock bro that we do here as well. So we salt it for about two weeks, and then we smoke it for about two, three hours. And we blend it with a bit of olive oil and sourdough bread as well. So the new old school way of, the original way of thickening things. And we make that as a spread on top of a bit of seaweed, a lot of chives for a bit of freshness, dill, lemon, a bit of chili oil, and dill oil as well, just to round you off. So. When I first saw this dish, I was like, I mean, I'm not used to seeing this much herbs on anything, but it works really well. The, the tamas thought is quite rich, so that one just adds a little bit of freshness and also cuts all the protein out of it. So. so in Singapore, they are all about ingredients. They also like the very natural presentation and the very naturalness of the food. We try to source the best ingredients and we just highlight that ingredient, trying not to sort of change their sort of physical structures, but more of enhancing the taste using wood fire or smoke, but at the same time, cooking it in the almost naturalism sort of way. So this uh, is Jamaican chicken lime crema, so it's take on jerk chicken wings, yeah. but we've made it a little bit more fancy, had a bit of brine to it as well, so it's got sort of injected saltiness to it, but it's got a fresh sort of char, and this is a, just a take on a, like a cool, a cool dip, uh, a bit of yogurt, uh, aioli, and um, lime. That's delicious. The next day, Patrick asked me to meet him in one of his favorite local spots. Mr. and Mrs. Mogan Roti Prata is just a little walk away from East Coast Road in Juchiat, made famous by its colorful houses. The stall is so popular that it's only open on weekdays and closes a little after lunchtime. The wait can be up to 90 minutes long. In this 17-year-old shop, they serve an exceptional crispy roti prata, a traditional buttery flatbread from India here served in curries from plain with egg or with cheese, paired with mortabak, mutton, fish curries, or sambals, giving you one of the best bites of food you can have in the city. This neighborhood is uh, the old uh, Peranakan area, so you have a lot of good, like, small spots. But this is like the one of the only places around where you can actually walk down the street from the Malaysian part from Gilang Sarai all the way down to the uh, to the east coast of the park. So over here, you got a cross of cultures, I and mean, you can walk over there getting like good Indian food all the way down to the Malaysian side. It is, it's just so much more. To your point, really important that people see also kind of like the diversity of the culture here. And for me as a chef, being super well-traveled, it's like, that's what I look for, to actually fully understand places. You should go to the suburbs, you should go see where the locals eat.
how do you, how do you eat this? For me, breakfast. I mean, as Filipinos, garlic rice, sweet, so good, man. super sugary sweet meat, yeah, uh, and eggs. So savory breakfast is definitely not foreign, but. Filipino flavors in general usually don't have much spice in it. It's not too spicy to be honest, but it's very, very flavorful. It's something they've made first thing in the morning and let it stew over and stew over. So the flavors develop over time. And for me, you just rip it out as we do. As we do. As we do. So we have some lamb, we have some cheese, an original, and then there's two, right? There's this fish, I think. Fish and the lamb. Yeah. Fish. But that's just it, man. All you guys do is just dig right in. How's good? It's crispy. It's not too oily. Yeah. At the same time, it's that um, sort of kick that you need first thing in the morning. I think that's what's cool about the city is you, you get you get places like Burnens, you get really high end kind of like tasting menus, but you also get really delicious food for like two dollars, three dollars, uh, just as filling and just as kind of satisfying as well, right? It's a diversity of the place. Anything you can find in KL or or Jakarta or anything like this, I can find it here. Well, I mean, your location here is perfect also. It's like the world is the best airport in the world. The city's quite convenient. Where you have to be is literally 20 minutes from where you live. The Tanjong Katong neighborhood is known for its Paranakan heritage shop houses, colorful street art, and its food. Patrick is bringing us to Beach Road Prawn Noodle House, which is arguably one of the best Haimi here in Singapore. This place gets packed very quickly, so make sure you arrive early. We briefly spoke to the fourth generation owner and he mentioned that what makes them different from other shops is that they cook their prawns fresh in an ongoing stock, meaning you get perfectly cooked prawns all the time versus a stock made with the prawns in it. The prawns are cooked to serve, and judging by the thousands of bowls they churn out, the flavor intensifies as the day goes by. We order the jumbo prawn and the prawn and pork ribs, as well as a plate of nohyang. You can have it dry with some side chili or with soup. So this is the pigtail, sorry, that's a dry version. This is the dry version, this is the soup version, obviously it all depends on how much sabao you want. So this one so, is the pigtail one, yes. yeah. And then this is just that's a regular. The, that's the legit one, the big the big prawn they call it. Uh, this one is on the dry side, so it all depends on how much liquid or liquid how spicy you, you want to it to be, so. And like I said, it's got a, a mixture of the bihuns and the, uh, the different noodles just totally make mm. two different textures. Yeah, so that's where it's at, so. Yeah. With some yeah. crunchy pork fat in there, that's really good. The rendered with lardons wow. was like the best. That's insane. Yeah. But the lard is just like, that's the icing on the cake, super texture. Delicious. Oh, so good. Yeah, and I like the mix of, so you got the really slippery rice noodles and then the, and the, bite, of, of the, the bite of the egg noodle, which is really nice. That's the thing is that there's no rules here. They're just cooking what they want and they're being different from some people down the road, hence why you know, you're going to be busier. Some places aren't going to be as busy, but... How would you, so let's say if there's different um, Hanmi noodle shops, they all have kind of like their own style to it. Usually it's like a, a tweak in the broth or a different sambal or... Those prawns so good. are incredibly cooked. Yeah, but they just pour to you last minute. Like they, they know to pour the broth over it yeah. it's right away. And that's it. I feel like people, when people travel nowadays, this is really what people are looking for, right? I mean, yeah, you get experiences from you higher end places and stuff, one. but you also you have to, to balance local. it out with this. Stuff. That's what I like about Michelin here is that they also highlight good hawker places, right. good value for money places where you should go. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to come here and eat at, you know, two Michelin star restaurants all the time. Mm. Eating all Western food, why would you come to Singapore? for? Exactly. People really rally around each other and kind of tend to always recognize and recommend neighbors, other restaurants to try. It's the community here is not competitive. Yeah. We try not to finish this bowl. It's like, it's good though. It's so good. So the, this is a, a lot of delicacies and a lot of being heard in this traditional. So the owner, yeah. owner, yeah, owner was mentioning some of it's made in house, some of it's from like old school producers, yeah. and you dip that either in the. Sauce either or if you want sweet or if you want sour or spicy, the world is your oyster, my friend. It is very, very good. I think the simple serve thing's weird, but kind of makes sense though. I mean, it's yeah. almost like a sweet sour, but just yeah. a sweet. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Well, you don't hear a lot of chatter. I mean, yeah. it's actually pretty good. That or you're just, you're getting you're, to a point where you're like, you're like food foaming I'm, now. I'm struggling. The rich cuisine of Singapore can be attributed to the generations of people that continue to uphold their family traditions and recipes. 
While there are some who choose to continue the business at the same stalls their parents once owned, others integrated modernity with their inherited tradition. One example is Kangki Seafood, a former Zichar hawker stall turned restaurant now operated by third generation owners, the Liu siblings Paul, Wayne, and Jamin. Come hungry and come with friends so you can order the whole menu. Welcome again to KEK Seafood. It started from my grandparents in 1970, so it's about 52 years right now. So in our menu, we have food of three generations. Like over here, you can see that's clay pot liver, that's from grandma. Nice. Then we have second generation, it's more like the moonlight hot fun, cereal prawns, and third generation, we have coffee ribs and salted egg yolk. Awesome. All right, so we have tons of food. We're continuing our food crawl. I am absolutely stuffed. Seeing all this, it looks absolutely amazing. Let's start with here. I mix everything in. Yeah, that's that's moonlight, moonlight hot fun. Okay. So the rind represents the moon. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, among the dark clouds. So that's the reason why we, we need to mix it, because you need a good amount of oil to, to cook this needle. Once you mix with raw egg, it just be a little bit smooth. Nice. Creamy, a bit like carbonara. It's like when you come back to this place, it's like, it's like a home away from home. So most of Singapore cooking is really like a uh, home style, kind of family style. That's why I love it. Met the man, yeah. but then the food spoke for itself right away. It was probably the best chili crab I had. The black pepper crab was awesome. And now the man's Salt a legend. Legend. He's always been a legend, man. <laughs> but even like, you just remember the taste in this one. And I think what's, what's a great market is what Patrick told me a while ago is you come here and you see generations of family, right? It just shows you that you guys have been able to kind of keep it, keep the quality, keep the level. The hopan, by the way, is like smoky, delicious. And this, I've never actually tried pork um, clay pot liver. It's so good. Yeah. And the, these are so addicting. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so he was just saying now uh, something from the other generation, from the grandparents. And now when their children become grandparents, that's their staple. Yeah. And they create new dishes for the bottom and they just keep evolving that way. So it's really interesting to see. If you don't mind? Yes, please. Buddy, I don't, don't mind? mind, man. Champion. United. Don't mind? Yeah. I'll be, I'll be careful of her. All right. Perfect. Cool. Thank you. I think that's, that, that's my job, man. Yeah? I know it is. <laughs> and you do it well. Whenever you go to restaurants, globally, you can't remember all the dishes that you had but you can always remember how you're treated. So if you get this hospitality every time you come in, I'm here all the time. So this I, salted egg crab is, how is it? It's the gym. Oh my God. How we do this, is we, uh, we use the, the uh, we extract the yolk, uh, salted egg yolk. Then we do, do it with the uh, milk, yeah. curry leaves, and bread eye chin, everything together. So you get sweetness, saltiness, and the light spiciness in it. This, by the way, tastes like cork candy. Yeah. I didn't realize it had like a shell, it's like a shell of sugar almost. Yeah. Um, we use coffee powder, coffee essence, essence that we, use, uh, we do pastry and, and beverages. We put sugar, honey, and one more thing, apple jam. We put apple jam in Shouldn't have told me that. He shouldn't have told me that now. Cut. Yeah. Yeah. That's now, mine now. Now I'll be, now. One thing is for sure, you're never far from a good meal in Singapore and everyone at the end of the day will have their own preferences on where to eat. I love that lots of the restaurants in the city specialize on one style of cooking and even sometimes just one dish. This specificity makes it easier to navigate all the options presented, but also showcases the value of tradition. You can eat lots of meals here that have been perfected over generations, evolving and improving every year serving you with a slice of culture in a constant state of renewal. I hope you enjoy this episode and make sure to catch all our other Singapore food crawl videos.